Hey everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. We are continuing our first unit on the chemistry of life with topic 1.4, properties of biological macromolecules. Um, in our last video, we discussed, uh, which I actually got this page from, in our last video we discussed how monomers become polymers, how polymers can become monomers to, through two processes called dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Um, so if you recall from last video, monomers are smaller molecules or building blocks of these larger molecules called macromolecules. Um, and when you link them all together through a process called dehydration synthesis, you get monomers, mono meaning one, um, into polymers, and poly means many. So polymers are like uh, polysaccharides, which are complex carbohydrates, proteins, um, complex lipids, and of course DNA and RNA, those are all polymers, and they're made up of smaller molecules called monomers. Um, so for this video and the next video, we will break down the properties and the structure and function of these four classes of biological macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Um, but in this video, we're going to discuss the properties as they pertain to the monomers of each of these types of molecules. Um, so this video will be focused on the monomers, and then the next video, 1.5, will be focused on the polymers and more of the structure and function of the polymers themselves, the big molecules, all right? But we're focusing on the monomers today. Uh, so obviously you don't have to write this down again because you did already, so let's get started. Um, so as I said, the monomers that make up macromolecules determine the properties of the macromolecule. Um, so what we're going to be discussing in this video today are mostly the monomers. Um, so the monomers of carbohydrates, as I put up here, let me just move my face. Uh, the monomers of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. Uh, the monomers of proteins are called amino acids. The monomers of some lipids, some types of lipids, are called fatty acids. And the monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. And we're going to be discussing each one of these four and some of their biochemical properties uh, today. All right, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with discussing monosaccharides and carbohydrates um, and the link between those two. All right, so complex carbohydrates are made up of monomers called monosaccharides. A complex carbohydrate is also known as a polysaccharide. So monomer, monosaccharide, polymer, polysaccharide. That's why we start with this one because it's the easiest. Um, so monosaccharides all typically end with os as a suffix. Um, and they are made up of three to six carbons in a ring um, along with some O and H atoms, so oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So take a look, our main, it's not that big here, but our main monosaccharide, the most famous one and the most important one biologically is glucose, and there's a picture of it. Uh, glucose is a ring of six carbons, um, and attached to it, it has these H's and OH's, and the proper name for these H's and OH's are hydronyl groups, which is the H, and the hydroxyl group, uh, which is the OH. Um, but generally speaking, every monosaccharide has three to six carbons with these H's and OH's attached to it. Um, glucose is going to be the most important because it serves as the starting point for cellular respiration um, and a bunch of other metabolic processes. So cellular respiration, which is a topic we'll discuss at length in uh, Unit 3, is how your mitochondria in your cells are able to produce ATP. The powerhouse of the cell. Um, so there's glucose. Um, some other examples of monosaccharides I've pictured here are fructose and galactose. As you can see, fructose is a five carbon uh, monosaccharide and galactose is a six carbon monosaccharide um, with a different configuration of H's and OH's than glucose. Um, so fructose, you may have heard of it before, in high fructose corn syrup. So Glucose, fructose, and galactose, they all tend to be very sweet sugars, sweet to your tongue. Um, so yeah, these are a major source of cellular energy. Fructose and glucose are really, really important for a process called glycolysis, um, which is a precursor for cellular respiration. Very, very important. Um, so if we take monosaccharides, excuse me, monosaccharides and link them together through a covalent bond called a glycosidic linkage, man, I can't talk, uh, we get a disaccharide, di meaning two. So disaccharides are made of two monosaccharides joined by a glycosidic linkage. And yes, I will ask you uh, to know what a glycosidic linkage is. Um, so to take a look at these examples that I've pointed to here, we have sucrose, which is also known as just table sugar. 
um, and lactose, which is the main sugar found in milk. Um, so if you take a look at sucrose over here, we have two monosaccharides linked together with this covalent bond right here. Um, and those are monosaccharides are glucose and fructose. Okay, so we link those two together, we get sucrose. Um, and lactose down here, which is, you know, you might be lactose intolerant because your body might not be able to digest um, this, this sugar, which is made up of a galactose and a glucose linked together. So those are disaccharides. Um, monosaccharides and disaccharides are both considered simple sugars, uh, while all carbohydrates, another t word for carbohydrates is sugars, glucose, fructose, sucrose, those are all considered simple sugars because they're either made up of one carbon ring or only two carbon rings. All right, um, so if we were to take a lot of these monosaccharides or disaccharides and link them together in a really long chain, that could be hundreds or thousands of links long, that would be called a polysaccharide, and that's what we'll get into in the next video uh, when we discuss carbohydrates. Okay, um, so continuing on to proteins. Proteins are made up of monomers called amino acids. Um, and um, bunch of amino acids in a chain, thousands of amino acids or hundreds of amino acids in a chain, those are what make up proteins. So we'll discuss amino acids at length today. Um, the order of amino acids in a chain, which is a protein, determines its properties. Um, what I have pictured here is what we call a generalized amino acid. So there are 20 different amino acids, but all of the amino acids have three similar similarities between them. All of them have this group over here, an NH2, and all of them have a COOH, and all of them have an R. And so, hold on a sec. R is not an element. It's not an atom. There's no element that's, well, there's radon, but the symbol, symbol is RA. So what the heck is R? Let's discuss it. Um, all amino acids, all of them, doesn't matter if you're glycine or tryptophan or lysine, um, they all have what we call an amino group over here are an amino end and they all have a carboxyl end or a carboxyl group. Um, so I've highlighted each of these um, and I've corresponded their colors. Um, so this is an amino group over here, the NH2 and carboxyl group COOH. Um, so each of these amino acids, if we were to put another amino acid there, the carboxyl group would be linked to the amino group and each of these links are called peptide bonds. Okay, so imagine another amino acid linked over here and another one linked over here, kind of in the same configuration. Um, those, so peptide bonds are what holds a protein together and links the um, individual uh, components of a protein, the amino acids. Um, so the things that make amino acids different, though, despite the fact that they all have an amino group and a carboxyl group, are the R groups. And the reason why we have R over here is because R is kind of variable for lots of different um, lots of different structures that can be attached to the rest of the amino acid here. So that's why it's also called a side chain. You might hear both of these terms when discussing amino acids, an R group or a side chain. Um, and the 20 different amino acids have 20 different side chains. They all have this, but they all have different R groups or side chains. And those side chains have different properties that affect the structure and thus the properties of the protein and the function. Okay, so let's discuss these R groups a little bit. Um, here is a table showing all 20 different amino acids, um, and they're grouped by the properties of the side chain. So over here, we have electrically charged side chains, so um, ones that have a positive or negative charge. We have polar, um, but uncharged side chains like serine and Threonine over here, we have some special cases that don't exactly fall into one of these other categories. And we have nonpolar, or also known as hydrophobic side chains, um, amino acids over here. Okay, so say tryptophan over here, it has a nonpolar side chain, which makes it hydrophobic. Hydrophobic meaning water fearing. So hopefully we discussed that a little bit in our 1.1 topic. All right. Um, so depending on which amino acids make up the chain and make up the protein, that will determine the structure and function of the protein and thus the shape of the protein as well because interactions between these side chains determines a lot about the protein structure. That's a topic we'll get into a lot in our next topic, 1.5. All right, 
Um, so those are amino acids. Let's discuss lipids now. So lipids are a diverse group of nonpolar molecules. And the thing that unites lipids together is that they're all hydrophobic um, and they're all nonpolar. So they do not interact with water. So generally, lipids are categorized by fats, phospholipids, and steroids, even though they're, you know, they're pretty complex. They don't fall into a nice category like, say, proteins or lipids, or excuse me, proteins or carbohydrates. Um, all right, so the kinds of lipids that we're going to be talking about in this video and a little bit in the next video are called fats and phospholipids. Um, phos fats are also known as triglycerides, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, but both triglycerides and phospholipids have these structures called fatty acids, which are basically just long hydrocarbon chains um, that either have a bunch of single bonds or they have some double bonds as well. Um, so we'll talk about the properties of those. Um, triglycerides are called triglycerides, tri meaning three, because um, a triglyceride is made up of a glycerol molecule and it has three fatty acids. So triglycerides are, you know, they're generally known as fats. And when you get the fat, um, so when doctors measure the amount of fat you have in your blood, they're actually measuring the, your blood triglycerides. And then phospholipids are made up of a polar group, a polar head that has a phosphate group within it. Um, and then two fatty acid tails are two fatty acid chains. All right, so both of these have fatty acids. Let's talk about these fatty acids. So um, going back to triglycerides for a second, because that's what I have a picture of over here. Um, triglycerides or fats can be grouped into unsaturated or saturated based on the structure of the fatty acids, right? So you might have seen these on a nutrition label before. Unsaturated fatty acids tend to be the good ones because they're liquid at room temperature. Say you're like your oils and stuff you find in fish and avocados, nuts, that kind of stuff. Um, and then saturated fatty acids are, or saturated fats, um, so these are triglycerides that have saturated fatty acids. Um, those are like your lards, butters, um, any, any kind of fat that's solid at room temperature. And these are considered usually bad. Um, and I'll tell you about why in just a second here. Um, so unsaturated fatty acids, which I've color coded in orange here, have at least one double bond in their hydrocarbon chain. Um, so here's a unsaturated fatty acid. Um, it has, check it out, I put a little star here next to the double bond. And take a look at the shape of this unsaturated fatty acid as opposed to the saturated fatty acids. It has a kind of a kink or a bend in it. Um, and that has to do with the fact that du uh, double bonds tend to be more rigid than single bonds. So um, unsaturated fatty acids have like kind of a kink in the chain and have a different shape. And that lends itself to not be able to pack together as well as saturated fatty acids. Thus, these fats with an unsaturated fatty acid tend to be liquid at room temperature. While saturated fatty acids, they only have single bonds in between each one of the carbons. So saturated means they're actually like covered by, by hydrogen atoms. See, um, there's, there's some carbons here that don't have, you know, two hydrogen atoms attached to them, but all of these have two, at least two hydrogen atoms attached to them. That's why they're called saturated. Um, so saturated fatty acids only have single bonds, um, and fats that ha have only saturated fatty acids are usually solid at room temperature. And the reason why that is um, is because these are more fluid. They don't have this bend, um, and these are able to pack closely together um, at lower temperature, or at even at higher temperatures, um, so that they are, tend to be solid at room temperature. And the reason why they're considered bad because if it's something solid in your bloodstream, you've got a lot of saturate, saturated fatty acid in your bloodstream, um, those can cause clots, and clots can lead to things like heart attacks and strokes, and just overall raise your high, uh, raise bl blood pressure and cause hypertension. Okay, so a little sidebar there about nutrition. Um, but we're going to wrap this up here. Here we go. Come on. It. There we go. Wow, I don't know why that took so long. Uh, all right, so wrap this up with nucleic acids and nucleotides. Um, nucleic acids, so DNA and RNA, are chains of monomers called nucleotides. Um, so kind of like proteins, amino acids um, are just, you know, they're the links of a chain, which is a protein. Nucleotides are the links of a chain in a nucleic acid like DNA or RNA. Um, and all of our nucleotides have a, kind of similar to amino acids again, 
all nucleotides, whether you're A, T, C, G, or U, um, have a five carbon ring like this, kind of like a carbohydrate, um, have a phosphate group up here. So it's a phosphorus atom attached to two, uh, three oxygens and an OH group or a hydroxyl group and a nitrogen base, which is variable, but it has nitrogen in it, okay? So all of these have these two properties, but what makes them different, what makes nucleotides different, um, is dependent on the base here. So check it out. We have um, five different nucleotides, and those are A, T, C, or G, um, and those are different by their, only by their nitrogenous base. Um, so check it out. This picture over here, this, um, this nucleotide is adenine. So if you look closely here, we have this five carbon ring, as we discussed before. It has a phosphate group and it has a nitrogenous base over here, over, as, that's a, as opposed to, I believe this is cytosine. Yes, I believe that's cytosine. Okay, it has a slightly different nitrogenous base attached to it while still having the five carbon ring and the phosphate. Okay. Um, so, what separates out DNA from RNA, there's actually several different things that separate those out, but one of them has to do with the nucleotides that make them up. DNA has a five carbon sugar called deoxyribose, and again, that ose suffix su suggests that, you know, part of a nucleotide is actually a carbohydrate. Um, and RNA's five carbon sugar is so called ribose, and there's a key difference um, between them. So, for example, Right here on this carbon in the uh, five carbon ring, the, the sugar, there's an OH here, but in DNA, there's not, okay? So DNA is that called deoxyribose because it doesn't have this extra oxygen attached to what we call the two prime carbon, um, and RNA does, okay? So that is gonna be one of the differences between DNA and RNA um, that we're going to talk about in topic 1.6. It's just kind of a preview for you there. All right, uh, that'll be it for this video. For 1.4, we're going to get into 1.5 next time um, and discuss the macromolecules themselves, the structure and function. All right, see you later. Let me know if you have any questions.